guys, welcome back to Embers and Ash. My name's Ashley, if you didn't know, and today I have some more mom hacks for you guys. You guys said you loved my last mom hacks video, so over the past couple months, I've been compiling a list of new hacks as I discover them kind of thing. Also, for some preface, uh, Rook is five and a half months old, so some of these hacks have evolved to you know, more of that age group, but I still have some newborn hacks in here. So yeah, let's just get started. <laughs> so the first hack I have for you guys is for when your baby keeps kicking the blanket off of them when they're in the car seat. This time of year, obviously, well, I guess depending where you live, it's cold outside. And so I always have a blanket on Rook while he's in the car seat for that transfer between the house to the car and if we're on walks, etc. And he always knocks the blankets off. His legs just go crazy like most babies do. So the hack is to use an elastic band to tie down the blanket to the car seat. So what you need for this hack is a knitted blanket or a blanket just that has holes in it, I guess, so that you can run your elastic band through it. I feel like this isn't a problem because anyone who has a baby gets given a knitted blanket from someone, so you should have one of these. All you do is fold your blanket to the size that you want, then just run some elastic bands through the corners and loop it through any part of the car seat. This might seem like something that only works for certain car seats, but honestly, it's not like there's a specific hook that I use to attach the elastic bands. I just kind of wrap it around the base of the handle and because elastic bands by nature are uh, grippy, it works pretty well. This also might not seem super aesthetically pleasing, but you can get like black elastic bands so it blends in better. I just used what I had and seriously, this is a lifesaver because especially at this age, Rook just kicks and kicks and kicks and this completely solves that problem and the blanket doesn't budge. The second tip I have for you guys is for the dreaded cradle cap. So we have one of those little kind of silicone scrubby things that you use to help with cradle cap, but it doesn't work great. I found that it would help lift the flakes, but it wouldn't remove them. So I felt like I needed to wash his hair more often than I probably should have to try and keep the cradle cap under control. Well, the solution is getting a cradle cap home. A friend of mine gave me one of these and it seriously was a game changer. So I would still use the silicone brush to help, like I said, lift the flakes, but this comb has very small spacing between the bristles. So when you run it through their hair against their scalp, it picks up all the flakes and removes them. Rook didn't have bad cradle cap, but he still had it. Um, he has a lot of hair, so it was hidden, which is nice. And I was really struggling for months to get rid of the cradle cap. I had to use this brush once and it was all gone. I didn't use weird shampoos or fancy products, just this comb one time and it was gone. So go get yourself one. I'll link anything I talk about in the description too for you to go check out. The third tip is for if you're using cornstarch for diaper rash prevention. This is pretty popular. If you haven't heard of it, it's kind of a hack in itself. You don't have to use diaper rash cream specifically. At least for myself, I find that the cornstarch helps preventing diaper rash. And if he does get diaper rash, I use the cream and it's gone kind of thing. But my hack is actually for how to apply the cornstarch because it's kind of a DIY method in itself. So the hack is to use little fabric herb bags. This I find just to be the easiest way to apply it because they have a little drawstring on them so you can pour the cornstarch in and seal it up but the fabric is loose enough that the cornstarch will still seep through and it just makes my life really easy. I just grab the bag, dab it on Rook, put it back. I keep it in a little uh, like tux container from postpartum and we're off to the races. It's a really awesome system. My fourth tip is for helping prevent toys from falling on the ground. So Rook is at the age where he loves playing with toys. I bring them out with him wherever we go so he has something to tinker with. But children love just dropping things on the ground. I'm sure it's like a developmental thing but my way of preventing this is to use pacifier clips attached to those toys. Uh, we don't use pacifiers but I made sure to buy a couple clips because it's really so nice to not have to worry about toys falling on the ground and always picking them up and making sure they're clean. All I do is I attach a toy to the end of the clip and clip it onto Rook's like seatbelt when he's in the car seat or even on his high chair, I'll attach it to the straps and then I don't have to worry about it. So easy. 
My fifth tip for you guys is about toys again, and it's that you really don't need as many toys as you think. And a way to offset buying a lot of toys is that there's so many things in your house that you can use that kids will love and you don't even realize it. So an example is we have this little, what do you call it? It's like a baster brush, I think. It's like silicone at the end, it has a plastic handle and Rook loves sucking on this thing. I think because it's all these little rubber bristles, it's a cool texture in his mouth, he just goes to town on it. Uh, something else is babies just love sucking on blankets and towels, so you really don't need anything special. A specific and easy example is I'll just give him a bandana to suck on, because normally we have one in the diaper bag anyways, and he doesn't know the difference between that and a proper toy. The bandana is specifically nice because you can like clip it onto the handlebar of your stroller seat so you don't even need a pacifier clip for this one because it attaches itself onto the device you're using. My sixth hack I actually got from the YouTuber Greer, G-R-E-E-R. -E uh, she's just another mom YouTuber I follow, so check her out. But the hack is to use wash bags when you're washing your baby clothes because it's so easy to lose like socks and hats and bandanas and onesies. If you have them all consolidated into one bag when you throw it in the wash and the dryer, you just know that it's all together and it's not gonna get lost in all of your own clothes. I have this one from NYX that I just got for free with a purchase of underwear. It's pretty small, but it works really well for those small items like socks, which are the worst for trying to find when you're doing laundry. My next tip is for if your baby is at the stage where they're ready to sit, but it can be a hard transition to even get them to understand what it means to sit. Uh, it's really common for babies to arch their back and stretch out their legs when you're trying to get them in that sitting position just because they don't know what's going on. So the hack is you don't have to be like, you know, forcing them into a sitting position. All you have to do is put pressure behind their shoulder blades when they're trying to sit, and this prevents them from arching their back and sticking out their legs. And over time, they'll kind of get with the program and you won't have to support their shoulder blades anymore. This has been super useful for helping Rook right now, and it helps me feel like I'm not over intervening with this developmental stage and that he is kind of doing most of it on his own. I'm just assisting. My eighth tip is for teething. Uh, Rook got his first tooth at like four months, which is so early and I didn't see it coming. But the best thing I found helps is having your teething toys in the freezer. This really helps soothe those sore gums. I have a variety of silicone teethers in the freezer, which are great and like easy for him to hold while he's teething, but I find that they thaw super quickly, so it's hard to kind of keep up with it. So my other option is getting a tea towel wet, folding it up and putting it in the freezer. Rook has loved sucking on these when he's teething because like I said, they last a lot longer than just the silicone toys and it's really easy for him to hold on to and you don't have to buy any extra products, you know? My ninth tip I didn't come up with, I don't know where I saw this. I saw it ages ago, so sorry for the lack of credit. But the hack is for when you are changing your baby's diaper and you're worried that their hands are gonna like get in the diaper while you're changing it. When you have a newborn baby, their arms are like so short and stubby so you don't have anything to worry about and they also just like don't know what's going on. But once they get a little older, their arms get longer and it gets dangerously close to some poop. So the hack is that if your baby's in a onesie, you can lift the fabric up and snap it over their shoulder which will keep their arms tight to their chest and they won't be able to do anything. They're kind of like strapped in for the ride. <laughs> Brooke hasn't seemed to mind it, he just goes along with what's happening and it makes changing diapers way less stressful. <laughs> so my 10th tip is about washing your child. Um, in my last video I talked about hacks for bathing, but now that Rook is older and has neck strength, the easiest thing for us to do is just shower with him. It can be a little intimidating and scary because yes, he gets very slippery when he's wet and soapy. So we always just make it a two-man job. Josh will be inside the shower just holding Rook and I'm outside the shower washing him down. So all Josh has to worry about is having a good grip and I do all the work and it's so easy. We just do it when one of us is already showering so it's not like a nuisance or extra effort. It's just been the easiest solution for us right now. 
So those are all the hacks that I have for you guys, but before I go, I want to thank the sponsor of today's video, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people. They have classes on everything from minimalism to photography, houseplants, graphic design, productivity, and so much more. It's made specifically for learning, so there's no ads, and they're always launching premium classes, so there's new skills to learn and existing passions to deepen. And it's less than $10 a month with an annual subscription. You guys know that I have been doing a lot of rearranging in my house lately, a lot more like interior design, trying to upgrade my house from my newly moved in stuff. And so I've been loving learning about interior design on Skillshare. The class specifically that I'm so obsessed with is Interior Design Basics, Simple Steps to Your Perfect Space by Lauren Cox. I previously thought that interior design was all about like instinct and just how you feel about a space but there's so much more to it and there's so much you can learn i had no idea that it was so complex lauren talks about everything from color to balancing a space to scale and proportion there's so much to interior design something that i've specifically learned is that the green wall in my house you guys know i'm not the biggest fan of and i didn't really know why because it's not a bad color but i learned a lot about color in homes and my issue with it is that it's a cool tone color and I gravitate more to warm tones in my home. So it just kind of clashes. I had no idea about this before. I just knew something was wrong. <laughs> so if you're interested in joining the first 1000 of you to click the link in the description to sign up, we'll get a free trial of the premium membership. So make sure to check it out so you don't miss out. Again, thank you so much Skillshare for sponsoring this video. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and we'll get some use out of these hacks. I know they have been very vital in my day to day. If you're interested in seeing my last mom hacks video, please go check that out. There's a lot of good stuff in there. Again, thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.